Hello guys, I'm Orbeta, your Welsh engineer, and welcome to the SSTO Space Plane Development Program, where I'm trying to develop a space plane from scratch because I'm useless at them. I also have to copy someone else's designs. Anyway, in this episode, we're trying to develop a Mark 1 cargo SSTO. Fortunately, there's no cargo base for the Mark 1 parts, so I've had to use a docking port and fit it in between the tanks, as you can see by here. I have two full ore tanks in the middle of the space plane. However, it seems to have not have enough thrust. I think we need to add two more Raper engines to this, and even after dumping the two ore tanks, unfortunately, we still do not have enough lift to get out of the atmosphere. So a bit more fiddling later, two more Rapier engines and a couple of extra tanks. In this design, I decided to add two extra fuel tanks as well as two extra pre-engine coolers because they act as in air intakes as well. And also, if anyone knows how to stop your space plane from wobbling on the runway during takeoff, please let me know because it's driving me nuts. This design, I have to say, is one of the better ones so far. We have multiple air intakes as well as the engine pre-coolers, four of them to be exact and four Raper engines. Also, I've been trying to refine my ascent profile, get up to about 13 kilometers. I've worked out about 13 kilometers this little sweet spot, speed up uh, to about 900 meters per second, then pull up. Now, I'm not sure if pulling up reduces my efficiency, but it seems to work here. We seem to get the altitude a lot quicker until the air intakes cut out and then we have to turn to rocket engines. Although on this test, I only changed one of the rockets to a rocket mode. So yeah, handy tip. Make sure that you have your action group set to change the mode of your rocket engines and to close all your intakes and all that stuff. If you wonder about this tilt wing design, there's more by accident, but I decided to go with it to see how it handled. Now I think they gave the control, it didn't tilt so much when I was trying to pull up because for some reason, this most of the designs I've done in this episode, every time I tried to pull up it would sort of like tilt one way or the other and I had no way of correcting that other than rolling the aircraft and however that made the nose point downwards which was also annoying. Anyway, I tried on this attempt to get a direct ascent up pointer about 25 degrees up and then just burn the petal petal no pedal to the metal because that's what you do in a play space plane isn't it? even though you use one of those leather throttle controls I think the pedal to the metal is a bit more apt anyway as you can see with this design we didn't have enough fuel to get into orbit so I decided to see how this works on a deorbit now we're traveling at but we were, we were traveling at over 2,000 meters per second. The cool thing with this is that this design with the open middle section, once we get rid of the cargo, does seem to survive re-entry, which is cool. However, is it a good glider? And more importantly, have I been learning my lessons on landing? Yes, I have. Awesome stuff. Okay, so this design, the basic design of it appears to work. I think I'm going to flatten the wings out and try again. This time, let's go for orbit. Full throttle, and here we go. This is where I complain about. It's hard to control. You try to go one way, you go the other way, you overcorrect, and Houston, we have a problem. Eject, eject, jab, jab, eject. <laughs> Boo. Cool. <laughs> He survived, as any hardy Kerbal did. He didn't have to eject, but hey, it's much more fun if you do. They should make sure that you can set an action group so your Kerbal EVAs and releases a parachute. And perhaps if you have more than one Kerbal in your command pod, perhaps you can have a time delay between each Kerbal ejecting or getting out of the cabin and then opening a parachute. All you have to do is an action group for it. Perhaps someone should do a mod for it as well. So on this test, I decide we'll go for a straight ascent, but as soon as we get close to, well, 
20 kilometers we'd sort of like level out as much as possible and so then we got more so we're trying to keep the atmosphere and trying to keep the engines fed with oxygen however they do seem to cut out and i don't know if we have any extra speed boost from that still something i'm gonna have to work out but let's see if i can get into orbit and yes we can we have enough delta v and it appears it only takes 250 meters per second from this ascent to get into orbit so i think that ascent profile is not too bad just a bit tweaking and we can get it perfect at least for this aircraft or spacecraft or ssto basically i think because the open section in the middle there is causing that little extra drag because i don't think aerodynamics like docking ports for some reason I wonder why. Hmm. Anyway, perhaps we'll have a bit more luck when we go to Mark II SSTOs which carry cargo because we can use the cargo bay there. Why aren't there Mark I cargo bays? Anyway, let's set a course for the, the, the runway. Ah. Let's see if we can actually land. Now, if you watched the previous episode, you would have seen that I launched my first Mark 1 space plane into orbit and we were able to land it at the KSC, which I think is bloody awesome for my account. We did break the engine on it, but hey, I'm the pilot here, so... And my track record for landing is terrible. Just ask anybody who's watched my previous SSTOs before this series. Right by here, I'm trying to slow down because we're going to overshoot the KSC. However, this design doesn't seem to allow it. So by here, I'm trying to change my tactic by doing S turns because I can't pull up. Perhaps I could turn left and right and then just turn a bit so that you reduce the speed as quickly as possible. Seems to work a bit. Although the space, this is a technique that the space shuttle used basically to slow its speed down to be able to land on the runway. Although I don't think it would have to turn around to head back to the runway. That would have been fatal. Basically, the shuttle, space shuttle is a flying brick, not much aerodynamic lift. And luckily this is not, and we also have some jet fuel on this left over. So let's return to the KFC. And then we can see my awesome landing techniques. <laughs> yeah, everyone take note. I have to admit that my flying skills after trying to build these SSTOs, even in a short span, has increased incredibly, well, quite a lot. Now, rockets I'm not too bad at. I can do dockings, I can assemble space stations, do pinpoint landings, which is not too bad. <laughs> but landing space planes is another kettle of fish. Okay, so there's me saying I've improved my flying skills and they crash when I land. Okay, so yes, a bit more improvement required. Also, it doesn't help that that thing at the back of this SSTO that I'm trying to use, the fuel tanks at the back are basically trying to balance the entire SSTO while still being able to have the payload in the middle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mark V space plane where we'll be tempting to go to Minmus to send into orbit these two crew cabins which will be sort of a mini space station. Yes, basically this thing will now be able to take things into orbit, create a space station, perhaps around Kerbin, could add a bit more mass just for Kerbin orbit, but I worked out we have enough Delta V to get to Minmus. Now, I'm a bit, I was a bit shaky on my figures on whether I'll be able to land at Minmus. Don't think so, but if we do, we'll give it a go. I have to say that Minmus is probably the easiest one to go for, which is why I chose it. And that's where I probably advise anyone who starts playing Kespi is try to land on Minmus before going for the man because there's lower gravity. It's a little harder to get to, but as soon as you get into orbit, it is so easy to land on. 
thinking about it, we could actually use Minmus for my SSTO program, where I can build larger SSTOs with cargo cap large cargo cap cap blah, 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 capabilities, if I can get that out, and then I can use them then to make bases on Minmus, space stations, and missions that can leave Minmus or something, I don't know. Let me know in the comments what we could do. So you probably noticed I launched at a slight angle. That was trying to get the same angle as Minmus, but I've messed it up. So when you create a maneuver node to get to Minmus and you're not at the right inclination, that's the angle of your orbit, then go for the ascendant and descendant node, create a maneuver node at one of them points, and then pl make plus one orbits on there on your maneuver node until you get an encounter. Sometimes you might get encounter with a man like we just did by here. Just ignore that, adjust your maneuver node a bit, and then just add extra orbits to maneuver node. You may get away with using the man as a boost to get to the min mass, but it's normally rare that you get that alignment, especially if you're trying to look, get to min mass from, from the ascending or descending nodes. And there we go, 924 meters per second. It appears I forgot to record the burn to get to Minmus. So yeah, I only started recording when we got to Minmus. Basically, I burnt to get to Minmus, burnt mi a bit out, so I did a mid-course correction or halfway towards Minmus. Don't be afraid, guys. If you get your first maneuver slightly wrong, you can do course corrections on the way. That includes going to moons, or planets, or anywhere else, or even rendezvousing with another spacecraft. Okay, let's release the cargo. Basically, it's a mini space station. We could, in fact, in theory, send a couple of more of these SSTOs up, dock these parts together, and build a tiny space station. And don't worry, I don't think I will make a video of these small, a small space station. <laughs> Basically, that will take too long and I have other projects which I want to do. So, you want to return from the man. Well, create a maneuver node roughly where I have and set it to boost away from Minmas and keep an eye on Kerbin periaps. What you want to do is try to get as low as possible. So, here we have 22 million miles. Adjust the position of your maneuver node to get as low as possible. Then boost a bit more, or we're gonna get a man encounter again. And then keep on doing that until you get about, for this design, I suggest about 45 kilometers, and that's inside the atmosphere. That'll give you aero braking when you enter the atmosphere, and that'll lower your orbit, because if you go any deeper, you'll probably deorbit fully, and it'll be too much stress on heating on your spacecraft, and then it'll just explode, so yeah. So really, you just want the sweet spot. And before you fully burn your maneuver node, focus in on curbing. Cancel your maneuver node. Make sure your spacecraft is pointing in the same direction as the maneuver node was. And then burn slowly until you get about 40, I think in this case, yeah, 48 kilometers. Don't forget to do a quick save just in case you messed up on a re-entry. And our Kerbal then will be glad to return. Even Jebediah, being in space for 16 days, it does get a bit cramped and a bit smelly in that cockpit after a while. A bit of a segue from this mission, I have to tell you guys that Simple Rockets 2 has been released on Steam. Now this is not in mobile games like Simple Rockets 1. Basically it's like Simple Rockets 1, but it's on the PC and it's in 3D. Possibly a competitor for Caspi? It looks quite good. I've actually I've actually purchased the game. I'm gonna give it a go. It was on offer as I'm recording this now. Hopefully it'll still be on offer when this goes live. So get, take a look at it. I think Marcus House has made a video of it. So if I haven't uploaded a video, take a look at it. Right, as you can see with this design, I'm able to punt the aircraft sideways that'll give us the maximum drag to reduce our orbit and this has brought our orbit under that of the man that means we won't get any interference say like on another orbit 
We won't get an encounter with a man which will throw us off into deep space or throw us into the surface of Kirby. <laughs> which has been done to me on a few occasions. At this point, I realized that at some point in the orbit, we were getting close to the KSC, so I raised our orbit to 55 kilometers, so that I reduced my orbit enough in two more orbits, and then with 55, 51 meters per second, we should be able to approach the KSC. At least that was the plan. Like a doofus, I didn't take into account Kerbin's orbit, uh, Kerbin's rotation. So, you know, I was thinking, oh, we're getting close there, and then two orbits later, uh, it didn't work out. I tried to do adjustments to get as close as you can see by here, trying to pass over the KSC. That's the best I could do with the fuel we had. Also note that I don't have any extra jet fuel for us to be able to fly to the KSC or anywhere else. So if we don't come over land and that means we have to dump ourselves into the ocean. Sorry Jeb, you'll have to swim back. You may also note that we lost control a bit by there, but the design shift in the center of mass a bit for the backs so that when all the fuel has drained out and the cargo is dumped, we still have that little extra control. So this would be a perfect glider. Say like if we had a runway on this bit of land by here, we would be able to land at it. The question is, can I land here? Is it possible? I don't like the terrain, look of the terrain by here. Hopefully the light is tricking me and it's not as lumpy as I think it is. But it is. It's full of hills and full of trees. The best combination for a space plane to land at an emergency. And also we're heading to the side of the hill. Luckily, I pull up in the nick of time, slow ourselves down, and a perfect landing. Perhaps that's my mistake. Perhaps I should be landing on hills. Anyway, Jebediah has returned. His mission to Minmus successful. Now all he has to do is phone for the nearest Cooper to get to transport him back to the KSC. Now I wonder if that'll be a good idea. A rocket Uber for Kerbals. So let's quickly pop into the VAB or the space plane hangar and have a look at this design of this space plane. Most of the tanks you can see are look at fuel and oxidizer for the amount of fuel that we require to get to Minmus with the rapier engines. They're not that efficient in space. I think there were about three tanks with liquid fuel. The pre-cooler, engine pre-coolers have a little bit of liquid fuel in them, so they do add up a little bit. If you're wondering about the centre rear tank, it's just a single part attached to one of the radial attachable points that I've got on the side there. What you do, you attach it to the side, you see the torque is about 7.6. Now you just have to adjust its position to reduce that as much as possible, left and right and then up and down. Basically you want to get as close as to zero as possible. And don't forget, if you zoom in, you have finer control on its position. 0.03 is pretty good, so yeah, that balances the space playing out. And also, this is the wind tunnel mod I was talking about. Tells you the excess thrust, so tells you the altitude going on the left hand side and the speed that you're traveling at. And it can tell you the optimal fuel path or the optimal time path to get into space. Looking at the ascent graph, it appears that I've done roughly what it says there, although not straight up at the last moment. Anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't, I'm Orbiter, trust me, I'm an engineer. See you in the next video.